All right, right on folks, John Crane here in the shop. Welcome ladies and gents of the internet. And before you, what I have today is two Coleman gas pressure devices. And if you are a Coleman aficionado, you know what these things are right off of the bat. This is a Coleman 228F big hat lantern. And this right here is a Coleman 530A46 GI stove. This is a copy of a stove that was used in World War II. They made these a little bit after the war. This one comes from 1946. At the time I'm making this video, it is fall time outside and it's getting much darker earlier. So I start thinking about flashlights. I start thinking about lanterns. So today I was thinking to myself, I should tune up that Coleman lantern. And while I'm at it, I should tune up this old Coleman stove. But in order to do that, I want to make a tool, a maintenance tool. And that's what today's video is going to be about. Now, if you guys have used one of these lanterns before, you know that you fill this up with gas, usually white gas. And then you use this device right here. It's a little pump. You pump this, it pressurizes the gas. It pushes the gas up to the top. It goes through the generator and then the gas gets vaporized and you get light. But in the bottom, of this valve right here, there is a check valve. It's like a backflow preventative valve. And it's good to take that valve out every so often and clean it because it can get stuck and get gunked up with old gas. If old gas was left in here, it can turn into a varnish on that little check valve. So today I wanna make a tool that extracts that. Now you can use a screwdriver that is ground down I'll show you that a little bit closer, but I want to make this other tool that is a little bit safer for getting that out. It prevents damage to the check valve. Okay, here's a closer look at the pump. Now, if we pull this pump out, you can see this has a little leather washer on here that seals and that helps you push the air in. And then right here, if we unscrew this, right? This pulls out and then down in the bottom is our check valve. Now I've already loosened this check valve up. Let me see if I can. Okay, you see right here down in the bottom, that little brass piece, that is our check valve and that is what we want to remove. Here is an old screwdriver that I've ground down to take that out. You can see I've got the tip of this ground down. Now I've already loosened this up earlier, but I'm gonna pull that out right now. I can feel that's loose and I'm just gonna dump this out. Okay, here is this check valve and you can see down in the bottom there, there is a little ball. Now when you pump up that tank and you pressurize it, it pressurizes and it pushes air against this ball and it comes up and it seals by putting pressure this way onto this little check valve. Now, a lot of times this gets like some varnish here from old gas sitting in there. This little ball gets stuck. So you wanna clean this out with some carburetor cleaner. Okay, let me show you the screwdriver that I have ground down to fit into this check valve. See how nicely that fits in there, right? This is a 3 8 screwdriver that I have ground down. Now here's a regular screwdriver. And if we put that in there, see how sloppy that is? That is no good, you don't want that. So this screwdriver, let's put some calipers on that if you wanna make this at home. So we can see, right, this is just over 3 8 of an inch. And then let's look at the thickness. 135 thousandths and of course right, it tapers a little bit as it goes back there. Now if you do make one of these screwdrivers be sure to do it with a square shank like this or this right here has this hex on it because you want to be able to put a wrench on this when you get it on that check valve and you can put some force on it. If you just have a round screwdriver you can't use this and I tell you these check valves really get stuck in there. You really need some force to get it out. That's why it's nice to make this tool that I'm gonna make because you do not wanna strip this out and get this stuck down there. All right, let's get on to this tool. 
Okay, now what the plan is to make this tool, if you bear with me for a second, you see the inside of this tube right here? It's just a little bit over three quarters. It's like 13 sixteenths of an inch. So this is a quick, dirty sketch of the tool I'm gonna make. This is gonna be a three quarter inch piece of solid stock. I'm gonna mill the ends down. Here is our check valve. All right, so you see our check valve is gonna fit onto the end of this. I'm gonna mill some flats on the sides. You'll be able to take a wrench, reach this down in there, and turn that check valve and spin it out. But also, if you look in the middle of this check valve, this is threaded in the center. And this piece right here, this center piece, I think it's a guide for our little plunger to slide on. But right, see these threads in the center? So what I'm gonna do is drill a hole in the center of this, and then I'll be able to slide a threaded rod down into the center of our check valve, and then put this thumb screw on the end. Now, don't get me wrong, they do sell these. People have been making these for years. You can get this on eBay for actually fairly cheap. You can get it for like 40 bucks to like 100 bucks for a good one, but what fun is that? I wanna, I wanna make my own. So here is the plan that I'm going with. Right here, I'm gonna have to shape this on the milling machine. I'm also gonna have to cut this down on the lathe, I cut these little flats. And this thread right here, if we get our little thread checker gauge and we can see quarter inch, right? And this turns out to be an interesting thread. It is quarter 32 is what that fits into right here. Quarter 32, this is a great little screw checker. If you don't have one of these, definitely pick one up. All right, let's go cut some three quarter inch stuff. All right, I'm cutting a piece that's five inches. There's a couple Miller welders that I picked up recently. I think these need some repair. But here's our piece of stock, five inches. All right. All right, let's head over to the old LeBlanc. Let me get you set up here. All right, we'll chuck up on our three quarter. Now I'm just gonna face this off. Okay, right now I'm drilling all the way through with a quarter inch drill bit. switch into a longer drill bit. Okay, if we mic up our check valve, let's see what we got here. 460, I think I'm gonna take another 10 when I cut our part. So let's go 450 on the part. Okay, we are at 675. All right, 450, 449, pretty nice. All right, now over at the Bridgeport, Let's put our piece 
in the vise here. I got these jaws here on the vise that have a little V groove. It's great for grabbing onto a piece of round stock. All right, we're gonna leave an eighth in the middle and on the sides, I'm gonna take off 0.1625 on this side, 0.1625 on this side, leaves the eighth in the middle. Here, I'm gonna just touch off here. Yeah, right there. Now I'm gonna zero out the DRO. Okay, let's see what we got here. All right, point one, three, five, one, three, six, one, three, five. All right, and one, two, five, pretty darn nice. Let's check the check valve. All right, that is just, that's perfect. Really nice. All right, there's our deal. And you know, I think I made this a little bit longer than I need. And now in hindsight, I'm gonna trim this back kind of to where I got that little Sharpie mark right there, but I'm gonna take a little bit off of the tips of these prongs. All right, now I'm gonna heat treat this. So I got a little can of motor oil. I got my map gas torch, I got my magnet. So now we're gonna heat this up to a nice orange color until it gets non-magnetic. Just let this heat work into the tip from the back here. See here, we're going into like a blue color. See, we're getting like a dull red now. All right, that is looking pretty good. Let's test that with our magnet. You see, this is no longer magnetic. Okay, and while we got that nice and hot, let's put that right into our oil. All right, we can pull this out now. Okay, this has cooled back down to room temp, and you can see it's real dark right now, so we want to clean this off on the wire brush because now we want to temper this and we want to be able to see the color when we're tempering it. So we're going to put it on the wire wheel to get rid of this color. We want to brighten it up. All right, now that we got this nice and clean from the wire wheel, now I'm going to heat this up again. I'm going to go for a blue color. When it hits that blue, dark purple, blue. Then we know we're about 560 degrees is what we're shooting for here. And that's gonna give us a nice temper on this. Right now, this is really brittle, right? It's, it's hardened. And now when we're heating it up here, it's softening it, giving it a little spring so it doesn't just snap off. We want a little bit of flex in it, but we still want it hard. So we're going for that 560 mark. Let's start heating this up. I'm gonna let the heat transfer from here up into the tips. See that? We're starting to get a nice blue color. Let's see if I can get the camera 
to focus on our gun here. So right there, yeah, 590, 585. Let's go out to the tip, 575. This is pretty good. I am going to dunk it now in our oil. Okay, while that's cooling down, I'm gonna cut a piece of brass rod, six inches long. This is for our threaded rod in the center. Okay, back over here at the lathe, we got our brass stock. I'm gonna chuck it up. I got the old three jaw in the three jaw. Okay, here is our quarter 32 die. And we're gonna stick this right here. And I like to run this chuck face right up against the back of the handle, just straightening out. Yeah, there we go. That's looking nice. And there's no rush. Okay, and I can see those threads cut really nice. It's a very fine thread for a quarter inch. Okay, now we're gonna flip this around and on the other side, we're gonna cut a quarter 20 thread. Here's our quarter 20. All right, let's test our, our check valve and that screws in there very nice. I did take this over to the wire wheel and I lightly wire wheeled the threads on both ends here. And let's see, I got some wing nuts right here. Let's see if this fits onto our quarter 20 side. Yeah, that's great, very nice. All right, cool. All right, the moment of truth is here. Time to test out our tool. I'm excited, I tell you, one of the most fun things I can do in the shop is to make a tool. You know, I work with tools all the time here in the shop, but when you make a tool and you use a tool, it's very satisfying. All right, let's test it out, make sure it is satisfying. All right, so we can take our check valve and screw it on. Cool thing about this tool is you can use it to insert the check valve or take the check valve out, extract it. All right, and then we'll slip this into here. And then, right, line up, look at that. That's looking nice. And then on this end, we got our wing nut. You wing nut. <laughs> and this, this doesn't need to be tight. You don't wanna put a lot of pressure on those threads. Just wants to be snug. You know, you don't want to put stress on those brass threads. All right, test out our tool here for the first time. Slide it into the Coleman 228 lantern. There we go, look at that, very nice. And now we spin off our wing nut. Pull out our tool, and then we back this out. And there we go. Works like a charm. Let's try it in reverse. All right, now we'll Slide our tool in and see when that, yep, clicks in just like that. And this one I didn't tighten too tight so I can take it back out by hand. But of course, right, when these are nice and tight in there, I don't know about nice and tight, you can put a wrench on the end of this and crack that free. And there we go. We got our check valve. Extract it with our new tool. Right on. All right, there we go, folks. The Coleman check valve extraction tool. Buy yours on eBay today.
or make one in the shop. And I like the latter of those two, make one in the shop. Now, I understand that not everybody has a place where they can come and they can make something like this or have the tools to make something like this. And I tell you, I feel really fortunate to be able to have this shop space and to be able to come in here on almost a daily basis and make things like this. It's really fun. You know, I got to alternate it with jobs coming in that bring in, you know, money to keep the lights on here. But I try to get into the shop here as often as possible. I really love it. And uh, I commend it to you. Start collecting some tools, build a shop in your garage, you know, get going. You can do it one piece at a time like Johnny Cash. All right. Now that I've got this made, I got to put it to use, right? Tools like to be used. So I got the 228F lantern. I got this old Coleman 530 stove. I think this thing is absolutely amazing. 1946 GI stove, right? I'm going to do some restoration on both of these. These are going to be in some upcoming videos that I'm going to share with you guys. All right. Hope you guys are doing great. I'll see y'all soon. Right on. <laughs> Billy Joel 150 Madison Square Garden. I was just at this show not too long ago in New York City. An amazing show. I, I tell you, a really amazing show. And look who's peeking over the background there. Old Jerry Garcia. Right on, Jerry. I saw him many, many times as well. All right. Right on, folks. Watch your tap, Matt.